Hey there, Andy here. So today we're going to be talking about enzyme structure and function. The first thing that we should know is that enzymes are basically proteins. Now what does that mean? Proteins are um, polypeptides, polypeptides with three-dimensional uh, shape. And really that, that function comes from the structure of that uh, in three dimensions. So function comes from structure. So enzymes are very important in catalyzing biological systems. Catalyzing. So let's look at the general structure of an enzyme, then we'll move on to its function. So think of a linear enzyme that has different subunits that are in a line because it's a polypeptide chain with a bunch of different amino acids in those subunits. Now in a solution you'll never see a straight chain enzyme because it'll tend to wrap around itself and, and form a 3D shape. So usually what you'll see is something like this where everything is kind of mixed and interacts and has kind of this three-dimensional shape I'm drawing drawing really haphazardly here, right? So you'll see enzymes that are kind of everywhere. And what you'll notice is that the structure of, the en of these enzymes kind of creates a pocket, and that pocket is called an active site. Active sites are where substrates interact. So what are substrates? Um, when you're talking about a chemical reaction, substrates are simply the reactants. So this would be an example of a substrate. So what happens is substrates, they come into an enzyme which is typically much larger than the actual substrate and the enzyme kind of surrounds them in its active site. Now in a solution, uh, enzymes tend to act as globular proteins because they have to protect the active site from, you know, say water or whatever solution it's in, um, because it's so important for the reaction and for the bonds to um, be protected from the outside world. And so what you end up seeing is you see all these amino acids, they may be far apart in the linear uh, form of the enzyme, but on the active sites they can be right next to, to each other. So you can see, you know, the amino acids from one part, one subunit of the protein interact with the amino acids from the other subunit of the protein. So this active site is really that 3D shape from a bunch of different subunits that allows it to be effective. So let's look at this chemical reaction right here and the function of proteins. One of the main points of proteins is to lower activation energy. Now what is activation energy? That is the energy required to make a reaction happen. To make a reaction occur. So let's look at a graph. I'm going to write a energy versus time graph. So the time is just as the reaction proceeds. And it's we're going to start out at a certain energy and then our reaction is going to occur and then we're going to end up at a lower energy. And so we start out with reactants in our example A. We reach this you know, reactive phase where this is the transition and then we end with products. So an alternative way to, to write this reaction is, you know, if A turns into transition A and then turns into B. So we see that there's a an activation energy associated with getting this reaction to start. So what enzymes do is they lower this activation energy by interacting with substrates at their active sites. And so this is a new activation energy. So it lowers it, so it lowers. 
And so here are some really important things to remember about enzymes is that they lower activation energy, Ea, but they do not change the thermodynamics of the reaction. What are therm thermodynamics? Remember, we're talking about G, we're talking about H, S, they don't change any of this. No change. And that's very important to realize. Another important note is that enzymes can be reused. They are not used up in the reaction. So if you look back up here to our reactions, you know, the enzyme isn't a reactant or a product. It's used in the transition uh, of the reaction.